welcome to State of the Arts. I'm Marina Munsi's Weiss. Today's show is being recorded at the El Paso Museum of Art, and it's a special one. We've got, well, as you may be aware, the El Paso Museum of Art is currently showing Papel Chicano II, Works on Paper from the collection of Chich Marin. Uh, it features 65 works by 24 artists, and today's show is going to feature a roundtable with several community members, as well as Chicano art collector, comedian, actor, writer, etc., etc. All around good guy. Chich Marin, welcome to El Paso. <laughs> nice to be here. So we're going to have a roundtable discussion, and okay. I'll just go ahead and kick off and ask okay. you the first question. Okay. All right. So, what's your take on the border, border artists, and the importance of collecting border art? Uh, you know that the border art is essentially Chicano art started as a political, uh, the, f the political face of the Chicano civil rights movement, and uh, and so border issues were always very important because mm -hmm. they were the most recent memories of many people. You know, and as further uh, as uh, as farther away they got from the border, then other issues came into play. But it's a, it's a, uh, obviously a a very uh, hot topic subject right now throughout the United States, especially here, which is kind of the center of it right now, where the, you know, whether you have a, a situation with Juarez and aquí en El Paso. Uh, it, is, it is brought it to the forefront of, of uh, American and international news right now, because it is, it is how, do we, how do we formulate a policy that is beneficial for both countries? So long question has been being asked for a long time, and there's been di uh, different solutions to it or different propositions that make it. Nothing made it work to the benefit of, well, chiefly Mexico, but nothing made it to the benefit of everybody concerned. So it's an ongoing issue, uh, and it is up to the artist, I think, to kind of illuminate the process because there's nothing better than to see an image that says a picture is worth a thousand words. You know, so that's that's a kind of not the quandary, but the opportunity that's involved with, with a focus on, uh, on border art. Yeah. Well, we're going to give it to Zaira Torres from the El Paso Time to ask her next, the first question, the second question. <laughs> well, I'd like to follow up on that a little bit. Um, I was reading some of your previous interviews uh, on, on Chicano art in your collection, mm -hmm. and I was reading one in 2005 where CNN quotes you talking about the importance of bringing Chicano art to, to the masses, and you said, you talked about wanting to share what Chicano art does, and the quote is, to symbolize the inclusion of the Latin and Latinos' cultural contribution in the mainstream that has kind of not been recognized. It's been more than a decade since that inter interview. Can you talk about where we stand in reaching that level of understanding, and has the recent political discourse made it more difficult? Uh, it has made it more difficult, but more present simultaneously. It's like trying to, uh, you know, open a kiwi fruit. <laughs> There's a lot of thorns in there in order to get to the fruit of the middle. It's, the, you know, it's, it is, it is an omnipresent topic and not, not uh, uh, made any better by our current uh, uh, administration. Uh, but it does bring it to the focus and, and, and to the forefront. So that 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 is good. Um, uh, as far as making Chicano art and the it, it is on its journey. Art is a is a slow grinding wheel. You know, I mean, it is, it is, it is uh, uh, the final imprimatur of a, of a, of a culture uh, and of, of any, because inclusion in a, in a, in a museum uh, signals acceptance, you know, and so we have from the beginning been told that you're going to work that you aren't really fine artists, you are agitprop folk art and go back to your little barbed wire ghettos. Uh, okay, well, I don't think so. But uh, as, as, as we've gone on, as Chicanos and Mexicanos and Latinos generally do, they say, okay, great, and kept on, kept on progressing. That's where we are today. And I've just spent the last say, 35 years traveling around the country to every major museum and I'm presenting Chicano shows because my, my uh, uh, mantra has been that you cannot love or hate Chicano art unless you see it. And now we'll give it over to Robert Olguin from KFOX 14. Okay. No. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> That's bullshit. <laughs> I wanted to get back to your collection, and I want to talk about your collection as like 
an organic thing no. in, in the sense that um, your collection, as you mentioned uh, in, the, in the previous question, it's now kind of taken on its life of its own. Yeah. And in, with, with what's happening in Riverside and if, with the prestige of the collection, do you give thought to how much you will change an artist's life mm. when you include that artist in the collection? Yeah. Do you think about what? what I, I, I noticed that that is happening. You know, it, it was certainly not my intention to, you know, do, I saw that as, as, a, as a byproduct of, of, of what we we're doing, but a lot of the artists got, I said, God, it's in uh, the collection, I sell a lot, and so I know everybody's, because artists of whatever stripe struggle in obscurity. It's a tough way to make a buck, you know? I'm, I'm trying to use the media as much as possible, but the word of mouth in art is, is very strong, you know. And it is, I mean, the last thing people want to do is say, what should I have, buy a loaf of bread or get a painting? You know, it's like, uh, you know, you know what the answer is, but part, uh, art enriches us, you know. And I was very fortunate in the beginning of my collecting as I was, uh, first started collecting painters from LA, because that's who I saw and they know in San Francisco, and very early in the process, I was introduced to the artists of Texas, the Chicanos artists of Texas. And so then I started uh, promoting it as a, a, a Chicano school of art that is, that is widespread in many, many places. And I got a lot of pushback on that from the community artists, or the museum community, because first of all, it was me. And, and the second, well, because no, we, we don't have schools anymore. That's, uh, that's, too, that's too old school, you know? <laughs> Okay, but uh, well, you can call it whatever you want, but uh, for my definition, uh, a school is a place where you come together to learn about something and argue and agree and fashion it. And, and if that is the case, then this is not a school, this is a university. And I wanted all those voices to, to kind of uh, uh, be raised and, and be aware of each other. We've got two more questions before we wrap up. Sure, Elvira yeah. Carizal Dukes from UTEP is next. Hi, so I grew up watching your films. Bless you. Uh, up, in, <laughs> up in Smoke came out the year I was born. Oh. And I also grew up watching Luis Valdez plays and mm. his films. And then later in college, I learned about Henry Gamboa. And so uh -huh. I learned about a new style of Chicano filmmaking. Uh -huh. And now here I am years later teaching Chicano cinema. Nice? So, I, so my question is related to what I teach. And so I wanted to know, how do you define Chicana Chicano cinema, and what is the state of Chicana and Chicano cinema today? And do you think it's necessary? Why or why not? Oh, well, that's an interesting question. Um, I think it all has to come down to the definition of Chicano right now, which is in great flux, and as as it should be. You know, I, and the one of the academic. Uh, 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 questions that I'm proposing to everybody that's going to be involved in the, to, in the community is what is the definition of Chicano today? And, and what I've been hearing, especially from, especially from all the artists, it is, it is not solely Mexican-based. It is uh, Central American, South American, Mexican, because that's how this great uh, street art phenomenon occurred, because they, Chicanos, were separated out from their own community by means of, of being other. Chicanos were other. They weren't Mexicanos anymore, they were Chicos, they were Chicanos, little satellite Mexicans living in tin shacks along the border. You know, so they were ousted from their own, you know, their mother community, and, they, and that, so they were other. So this tag applies to all those people that grew up in the same milieu, they were influenced by the same cultural <laughs> bending forces. They are other, and they and they um, they you know they grew up <laughs> doing the, uh, going to the same schools, and then it was dead for a while. But the, then the next generation, a couple of generations, the younger kids, the rock and rollers, the punkers with the black leather jackets, they were also artists. They start going back and forth across the border, you know, from either Mexico, or Honduras, uh, Nicaragua, uh, all those, and they were the, they they were the ones that brought Chicano art to the for forefront because it spoke to them. And now we have our final question from okay. Molly Schrader, editor of the Tejano Tribune from EPCC. Hi. <laughs> so, going back to the word celebrity and um, shedding light on smaller community artists, uh -huh. what kind of role do you think celebrities such as yourself should play in promoting Chicano art? Uh, it always helps. 
you know, it really, it always helps. I mean, I know since I've started collecting and, 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 and uh, advertising this, this, this process that I have this big collection and then I travel it around so you can enjoy it, other big collectors have arisen and bless them. And I, that's what I want. And they, each of them have their own goals or their own reason why they're doing this. Some it's for, they think it's going to be the next big art thing and they're going to buy it for $2 and sell it for two, two million. Good luck, you know. Uh, uh, the, the wheels in the art art industry grind slowly, now, or sometimes very fast, you know, like the, the pop up culture. Um, uh, but it, it helped me. It helped me because through Cheech and Chong and Cheech, I've had a lot of goodwill out there. It wasn't like I played a serial killer in every movie. You know, I played a, a, a character that everybody could, you know, relate to and. And, and it was relevant to the community, so that r absolutely helped, you know. But now we're we're going to use Riverside to not only expand the definition of Chicano, but expand and, and focus on other aspects of, of the art making process. Uh, I want to have a lowrider museum, you know. It's it's that it's that combination of high and low art at the same time, which all my favorite artists encompass, you know. And, that, and that's great because. All the artists that I collect or have collected in this are, are university and or art school trained. And they're influenced by international historical art plus their community and plus Mexican art and plus whatever Latino country they come from. But I want to gather them under, I want to re-label re them under a, a, a bigger uh, definition of Chicano because it has come to mean other. It always has meant other, but there's a bigger definition of what that otherness Cons uh, consists of right now, you know, and I want to join them all together because, you know, it, it, it is a thread that we're going to. You know? It is a thread that makes this country better, you know, and world better, you know. It's like because now we will start to reach out to uh, uh, have a more international face, and that's when it really gets started. Yeah, it's a nice ride, Thank and you. it really is a nice ride. Any other? Questions? All right. Nah. Well, that does it for this edition of State oh, of the Arts. Cool. Thanks to all our guests and Cheech Marin for coming and talking yeah. art and politics here in our West Texas town of El Paso. They're inseparable. Thank you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they are inseparable. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate you coming. My and pleasure. thanks for bringing Papel 2 to El Paso. Ooh, this is a good one.